we will now have a look at the variant by Fruchtemann and Rheingold. In their variant, basically they just chose a few different forces, but that gives us different layouts. So what do they do differently? They want to simplify all the stuff here. They don't want a repulsion constant, but as we saw earlier, somehow it's weird that the ideal length isn't in this function here. So instead they just replace this by an L squared. You want to be close to the ideal length and otherwise you have a huge repulsive force. And for the attractive forces they got rid of the spring analogy, they directly computed the attractive force. And they again want to choose a very simple function. And this is almost the same as this one here but flipped over. Instead of having the ideal length squared divided by the distance, we have the distance squared divided by the ideal length. And this again gives us a system of forces that's much simpler than the one by Eats. Let's have a look at the graphs briefly. The repulsive force looks very similar to the one by Eats, of course, because we just have some constant squared here in the Eats algorithm we had some constant. So that doesn't change much. And the attractive force, this gets large very fast. If we have a look at what the spring force would look like, so just imagine we have the spring force, then this looks like this. So this grows much, much faster than the one by Eats, which we had here. Here the spring force gets larger, but not nearly as fast as we have here in the frochtemann rheingold algorithm. So we have easier forces, but we also have much stronger forces. So let's have a look at our example again to see how this influences the drawing. I will switch here to the frochtemann rheingold Now we only have two parameters, what is the ideal length and what is the cooling factor. Here I chose a larger ideal length in the beginning, but a smaller cooling factor. Let's see what happens. We can immediately see, compared to the Eats algorithm, that there is a lot of flickering here. If we go through this part here, the vertices are jumping around. You can see they are jumping between two positions, basically. And if we didn't have this cooling factor, it's quite possible that they would just choose two positions and jump between them indefinitely. And it takes a while until the drawing gets over this hill. So if we look at this part, somehow it's jumping around and at some point we get over this and then it statically moves to some good layout. And again, here these parameters have a huge influence. If I just put this number at 1, what's very interesting is we move a little bit and then it's over. The forces are too small but we, so that it just stops. So let's make this much larger. Let's say 0 0.999. And then we will see that now it doesn't stop immediately, but it gets going, it keeps going, and then it gets over the sill. And now everything pulls together. And when we're here, we start jumping around again. But if we look at it just step by step, let's make this very slow you see that basically we again have two positions where these uh, vertices are jumping around between. It was here, there, here, there, and so on. And now because the cooling factor is so large, it takes a long time until anything happens. And in fact, I think with this factor, it just never stops jumping between these two. So this factor can have a large effect. If I just make this 0 0.997, then, just look at it, it continuously moves, it moves, it moves, and we don't go get this stuttering in the end. It slowly moves, but we will soon get our drawing, and it doesn't even look bad. Here it stops. On the other hand, if I make this too small, let's go back to a 35 here, then it can also happen that it just doesn't do much at all. And, but again, here the L has some large effect. For 35 it doesn't really work, 
If I put it just to 100, then we get a very good solution very fast, even with the smart coding factor. So just with these very few parameters in the Eats and Fructum and Rheingold algorithm, we can change a lot. Let's have a look at another example with both algorithms, just to compare them with the standard arguments. With this graph here, if we use the Eats algorithm, then we get this drawing. This is clearly a planar graph, and this is a pretty nice planar drawing of this graph. We use the Fruchtam and Rheingold, then we have the stuttering, but we get a quite similar layout. This isn't too far away from the one that we got from Eats. I think it's a bit nicer because you have uh, larger faces, but still we have a very nice drawing of this planar graph. On the other hand, I will now add just a few more edges, I think it's just three more edges here, and run the same algorithm again. And we get this drawing. Now this is not a planar drawing at all, we almost have a vertex edge overlap here. But you can easily see that this is a planar graph. If we just move this vertex to the outside, and this vertex to the outside, then we would have a planar embedding. So we can have planar graphs where the fruchtermann rheingold and also the Eats algorithm don't give us planar drawings. Here it's even more clear, there is no reason to have this crossing. You could get a much better drawing where we don't have this. So it can happen that we have planar graphs, but we get non-planar drawings. And that's often something that we don't really want. And to solve this problem, we will have a look at another variant, which comes from Tut in the next few parts.